What's good people? So this past September, I went to Malta and it was amazing. Malta is beautiful. And what's crazy about it to me is that a lot of the people that I know have never heard of Malta, except Dominicans who drink Malta. But we're not talking about the drink, we're talking about the country. And I'm gonna give you my travel guide along with the things that I did in Malta. Malta is beautiful. It's a small country that's located right underneath Sicily in the Mediterranean Sea. It consists of three main populated islands, Malta, Comino, and Gozo. I suggest that you go for at least six days. I went in the middle of September and the weather was great. Perfect for you to go and take a swim with the jellyfish. But first, a little disclaimer. Maltese is a pretty difficult language for me, so I know that I'm gonna mess up the pronunciation on a lot of these things, but I'll write the names of all the places that I'm talking about in the description. So in Malta, there's so much cool stuff to do. First, people watch and have a drink in Paceville. There are nice bars and good prices. Next, watch the sunset at Dingley Cliffs. This was one of the most amazing sunsets that I've ever seen in my life. The way the sun disappears over the horizon, lighting the cliffs with this beautiful golden light, it's something that everyone should experience. Bring a bottle of wine and a blanket. Next, tour the Blue Grotto at eight euros a person. This is a no brainer. They take you around the caves and show you different perspectives of the cliffs. Go early in the morning so that the colors are just right. The way the light bounces off the water, lighting the caves is beautiful. This is a must see for everyone. Next, walk around Valletta and sit outside a coffee shop to people watch. Valletta has some beautiful views and buildings, so you won't find a shortage of photo ops. Something cool to see in Valletta is the Cannon Salute. They do it every day, so show up at around 10 a.m. so that you can get a good spot. Medina is another cool spot worth seeing since it's the old capital of Malta. Walking through the streets makes you feel like you're in a GOT episode. St. Peter's Pool is an automatic spot for you to visit. You can't say you've been to Malta without jumping into the water. I did it several times and it was amazing. The jump is about 20 feet and it's really scary when you're looking down, but it's so much fun. Bring your water shoes because it's really rocky. If you're planning to stay a while, bring your own food and drinks because there's no place for you to buy anything there. There is an ice cream truck that was parked there when we were there, but they didn't have any food. Next, spend a day at Golden Bay. This beach is one of the few sandy beaches in Malta and it's beautiful. Drinks and food are readily available along with umbrella and beach chair rentals. We spent about two hours there on our way to Gozo and it was not enough. So spend more time there. It's a little crowded, but it's totally worth it. Also, watch the sunset and moonrise at Gahan to Fieja Bay. The sunset here is beautiful because it's not too crowded and you can arrange a nice spot on the sand with towels, pillows, and a lantern for free by reserving with the restaurant that's on the beach called Sangita Bay. You can order drinks from them too. Next, take the ferry to Gozo. You can drive your car right on and take a seat on the upper deck to see some really nice views. This is also a really nice spot to see the sunrise in the morning. Now that you're in Gozo, visit Weed Il Garci. This is one of the most beautiful spots that I've seen in my life. It's a unique spot because it's like a valley that's filled with water, that has a nice rocky beach hidden at the beginning. It's best to be there when the sun is directly overhead and it's not casting any shadows. We got there late, so the sun was getting ready to set, so half of the spot was shadowed. Not good for videos or stills, but it's okay because the water is clean and you got this natural beauty and chill vibes. Make sure that you bring some wine, beer, and sandwiches as there's nowhere for you to buy anything while you're there. Victoria is beautiful. It's the capital of Gozo and it has this unique architecture and it's located on top of this hill. So it looks like it's straight out of the Middle Ages or Game of Thrones. Worth a visit for the views. And once you're up there, the panoramas of Gozo are awesome. I know you're hungry, so go to Mashok Bakery. If you're in Gozo, you must have the pizza here, it's amazing. Probably one of the best pizzas that I've ever had in my life. It's wood-fired brick oven pizza. This spot is about 80 years old. A friend of mine put me on and I'm glad that he did. While you're in Gozo, make sure that you book a trip over to Comino to see the Crystal Lagoon 
and the Blue Lagoon. Komino is the third biggest island in Malta and it isn't as populated. Crystal Lagoon is a great spot for you to take a swim. The water is beautiful, crystal clear. I like this a lot better than the Blue Lagoon. The Blue Lagoon was nice if you're interested in a party atmosphere, but it was a little too crowded for me. The water was nice, but swimming really wasn't an option because of the jellyfish. Yes, jellyfish. I was told that they weren't the type of jellyfish that stung, but I wasn't 100% comfortable. So I just looked, took a dip, came back on just to say that I swam in the Blue Lagoon, but I had no interest in swimming with the jellyfish. But that's something that you have to get used to in Malta. Everywhere you go, you just have to make sure that before you jump in the water, you just scan the area to make sure that there aren't any jellyfish there because there are some that do sting that can really mess up your trip. So just scan the area and then take a dip. The ferry company that we used was Slendy Water Sports. I recommend going with them because they're a smaller ship. There are bigger ships that are cheaper, but I wouldn't recommend it because there was a scene, this mob of people waiting to get on that ship, and I was so glad that mine was a lot more intimate, and I didn't have to fight people to get on. So go with the smaller guys, even though they're more expensive, because you're on vacation, do you really wanna be in that mess of people? I didn't, I wanted to be relaxed, so I went with them. So two things that I regret not doing because of time constraints was visiting Gigantia, which is one of the world's oldest structures and Hypogeum, which is an underground temple and network of tunnels, which some people say spanned all over Malta. I definitely recommend visiting these places. We planned our trip a little late, so we couldn't get tickets to go to Hypogeum. You have to buy these tickets at least two or three months ahead of time, or else you're not gonna get any. You can't go there the day of, and there aren't people there scalping tickets, so please do yourself a favor and book this far in advance. Okay, so how to get around Malta. Malta has a very inexpensive and extensive public transportation system. So if you aren't a driver, you'll be just fine. However, we rented a car because it was the best way to get around. And here's why. First, it's cheap and you'll get to places a lot quicker and a lot sooner, making your trip a lot more efficient. We rented our car for about $17 a day. The only thing is, is that the Maltese drive on the left side of the road and coming from the United States, that's the wrong side of the road. So it was a little disorienting. I had to get used to it, but after a while, you'll be fine. Trips that would take an hour and a half by taking a bus will only take about 45, maybe 30 minutes if you were driving. So that was pretty much it. I loved my trip to Malta. I tried to pack in as much as I could in the week that we were there. If you have any more tips and suggestions, put them in the comment section. I'll appreciate it and I'm pretty sure someone else will. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button and I'll catch you next time.